In this tutorial, we're going to focus on Adobe Spark Post. And in previous episodes, we've looked at the other Adobe Spark tools that you can get for free from Adobe. And those other tools are Adobe Spark Video and Adobe Spark Page. They're great tools. If you haven't seen my tutorials, please do so. But like I said, in this particular tutorial, we're going to focus on Adobe Spark Post. You can just go to spark.adobe.com to sign up for a free account. And once you do that, you'll get access to all three of these tools and you'll be able to get started. But first, what exactly is an Adobe Spark post? Well, to give you an example, I'm going to go here to the Inspiration Gallery. And here they have examples of all three different kinds of Adobe Spark projects you can make. But notice that they're labeled in the corner. This is a post and it consists of a quote with a background image. So basically, Adobe Spark Post is for creating memes or quotes or little mini online posters, basically, that you can put on social media. You can easily post them to Facebook or tweet them. And really what it boils down to is an image with text on top of it. So let's go ahead and create one. So I'm going to click on this plus sign here in the corner, but there's other ways that you could access this tool. But like I say, I'm just going to click that plus sign. It takes me to a page where I can choose to make a new Adobe Spark video page or post. I'll click on post. It loads up the interface that I'll be able to use and it makes it really as simple as can be. It starts out with what do you want to say? And I'd like to make a meme or a little poster that teaches a time honored truth, which is haste makes waste very profound but often overlooked so that's what I want to do and at this point I could just click continue but you should also know that there is an option here to change the graphic size right now it's Instagram size basically a square but I could easily switch it to Facebook I could switch it to a Twitter sized graphic or a poster or a slide and notice that there are more sizes okay and some of these are great for things like blog banners or banners for just about any website you've got a YouTube thumbnail that could be very useful uh, but here is banner okay so I could choose that if I would like to create a banner in this case I'm gonna stick with Instagram and I'll click continue and it loads up the size and the text that I had selected now Adobe Spark post automatically assigned to me a theme and that theme just comes with a text font and style and color. And it's also got a shape back here behind my text. And it threw in a random photo. And this is just to help me start to imagine what my post is going to look like. Okay, but I want to change this up so I can do that in a number of ways. First of all, I could switch themes. Okay, and I can just browse down the page here and there's all of these different themes that I could choose from that might match the mood that I'm going for or the look that I'm going for for this Adobe Spark post. Okay, I think I'll just switch to this particular one. Okay, text in the middle and the font a little different than it was before. Next, I'm going to change up the photo. So I'm going to click here on photo. And just like with the other Adobe Spark tools, I have the option to tap into my Google Photos account or Dropbox or these other accounts to pull in photos that I could use. In many cases, though, the best option is just upload from your computer or find photos on the Internet. And that's what I want to do. So I just clicked find photos. I'm going to type in something like spill. OK, let's see if it comes up with any images that make sense for the particular phrase that I'm uh, trying to make this meme for. OK, and there are a few I could choose from, uh, but this one seems to make the most sense to me. So I'm going to click on it and it instantly just works to switch out the old photo with the new one that I've selected. OK, awesome. I'm actually really happy with the results here and uh, I'm tempted just to save it as is. But notice if I would like to, I can move the text. Maybe it's covering up something I don't want it to cover up. I could move it up a little bit or move it to the side. And I do actually like that a little bit better for some reason. Now, in addition to moving text and changing the background image, some other things you can do include clicking on the background and notice I could add additional text to put in the author of the quote or whatever you might want to put there. And uh, you can then resize the text and move it around uh, and put it where you would like it to be. Now, there's lots of other options as well that you could try out, but I'm just going to click on it and go up here and click delete to get rid of that because I don't really want it. Another thing you can do by clicking on the background is you can change the color 
And so these are good if you just want a specific color in the background instead of a photo. Now, in addition to the color options, there's also photo options where you can apply a different look to the photo that's in the background. I could try this Mont Lake look or Magnolia, Theo. There's all these different filters and looks that you can apply to the background image. You can also rotate the background image. You can scale the image differently if you would like. And so there are some really good other options that you have there. Okay, now this is just one panel at the right. And the panel changed because I clicked on the background and chose color. But notice that you can also just go here to the upper right and you can choose the different panel options here in that upper right corner. So here I could resize. It gives me another opportunity to do that if I would like to. I can resize my image. I can change up my themes. There's also the palette options. And what these are is if I click on a different palette option, it would change the color scheme of of my Adobe Spark post. So for example, if I click on this one here, you'll notice that it changed the background of my text. It also changed the color of the cup, okay? And it's kind of subtle sometimes, but you can see that clicking on the different palettes really does change the look and feel of your Adobe Spark post. I'm gonna stick with this particular palette and there's the background panel and we also have the text panel and this opened earlier when i clicked on the text box now a couple of things that you should know about the text panel here at the right you can change the shape that goes around the text if you would like to okay so there's some shape options there we also have some color options font we have the spacing options for the text alignment to make it centered or not centered. And we have some transparency options and, and things like that. So there's really some good options. For many people though, they don't really wanna play around with these different options. Instead, what they might wanna do is just click on this green circle and rotate it around. And look what happens. As you do that, it kind of randomly gives you some different looks for your text. Okay, so it's a great way to explore what's available and some of the options that you have. And you might not have considered some of these, but they might strike you as being really attractive and, and the look that you want. Okay, so these are style suggestions. In this case, I'm just going to cancel that to get back to what I had already. But that's a fun thing to try. Okay, so that's pretty much what you need to know about Adobe Spark Post, about how to make these images with text. It's great for social media, great for memes, great for posters, excellent for the classroom. For example, imagine having students make Adobe Spark posts for each vocabulary word that they're supposed to learn in a particular unit. And you could even make it into a contest and have you know the students make their best Adobe Spark posts for the different uh, vocabulary words and then you vote on them or whatever you wanna do. And then over time, you as the teacher could collect and save the best examples and um, you would soon have a wonderful collection of visual vocabulary words that you could use to help your students learn what they need to learn. So that's just one example of many of how a teacher could use this in the classroom. Now, once you're done designing your Adobe Spark post, what do you do with it next? Well, basically you click here on share and it takes you to this page where you can rename it if you'd like. You can put it in a category. I'll just put this in education category. You can have your name as the author appear or not. You can even put in a picture if you'd like. But in most cases, what you're gonna wanna do is either download this downloads a copy of it to your computer, and you could put that into PowerPoint or Word or whatever you wanna do. It's just an image now on your computer once you click that download button, okay? So here it is, okay? And you can see it looks good, it's good quality. So in most cases, you're either gonna do that or you're gonna click Create Link. If you click Create Link, it compiles it together. It gives you a shareable link that you can click, you can copy, and post that anywhere you want to post it. You can easily also post to Facebook, Twitter, or you can just email it. And so these are some great options for sharing the wonderful Adobe Spark posts that you create. So I hope you're thinking of some ways you could use this in the classroom or professionally or just for fun. And thanks for watching this tutorial. And please consider subscribing to my YouTube channel for more videos about technology for teachers and students and watch for new videos at least every Monday.